by the way, I would say I, I will agree with you guys on this in that if the Blues do get Bacchus, and this is just joking. I mean, I don't know if they're actually going to do this or I not. They're probably him. not. Um, but if they do, he'd be a better option in the lineup than Zach fucking Sanford. Oh, uh, yeah, I think you're right there. I think we can all agree there. Yes. Holy but, crap. But in fact, by the way, you know, when, when you're when you're a middling to low Twitter influencer like our Blue Notes Twitter account is, you know, we have a few hundred followers, but uh, sometimes getting likes can be hard. Um, Twenty one people at last check liked a tweet last night that I made suggesting that um, the Blues give up a draft pick to Seattle so that they take Zach Sanford. Now, this is now I made that tweet, made that tweet, not just because I'm so freaking ready to see Zach Sanford leave town. But I also made it because it might protect like an Oscar Sunquist, you yeah. know, or someone like that. I know Doug Armstrong, you know, as Dan Ferris pointed out, uh, he's, he said that he's not going to do that type of a deal. But I would like him to at least consider it. I would like him to at least consider it. What do you think, guys? I agree. I agree. Yeah. I mean, uh, you, you know, just like you, that was a pretty hot topic, you know, after last game, especially, you know, because it was literally Zach Sanford's fault we lost that game. <laughs> literally. Yeah. Um, but it, it was a very hot topic. And literally, I I'm in the question segment of my video yesterday, you know, half the questions were, what would you do to get rid of Zach Sanford? Including you me. Know? And I said, yeah, including you. I not, And I said, you know, I wouldn't mind if we got rid of a third or, to be perfectly honest, even a second. You know, yeah. I wouldn't really care. Just get him out of town because that second, even if it's Zach Sanford in a second leaving town, like, that that second that second round pick is worth less than an Oscar Sunquist, which would be staying on the team. That's my yeah. logic behind that. But I think we could get away with just getting the third, you know. And I feel like he he deserves that kind of wake up call. I think he's earned it because I mean Zach Sanford's been good for us. You know he's he's treated us well. It's just the last you know that this year is just not his year anymore, unfortunately. And it's it every it, there comes a time in every player's career where they got to make a decision. And, uh, you know, sometimes the management just has to help with that. Maybe he just needs a fresh start, you know. Well, here's so, the thing about this, That's though, something I wouldn't he's, mind. He's a restricted free agent after this season. So True. I, it's not even so much that the Blues have to do anything. They, they may not even have to offer anything mm-hmm. to get rid of him. I'm not entirely sure how the expansion draft and restricted free agency, all that stuff works. I think RFAs would still be eligible, and then the Kraken mm-hmm. would get a exclusive negotiating window essentially with whoever yes. they pick, which is which is which is that some people have talked about, like if for instance they take Schwartz, you know, if the Blues unprotect Schwartz, if he's going to be a UFA and he's not coming back, the Blues might do that. They might, you know, Seattle might pick Schwartz, and then they'll have an exclusive window to talk with him. Otherwise, mm-hmm. he's a free agent. So that's kind yeah. of that's my understanding of how that works. Um, and, and and the thing with Sanford, and and, and I'm going to name drop here, and I and and I don't like doing that, but it just you know, but it, it but it, it this is a moment that happens. So I remember coming out of the Blues press box and sharing an elevator with Jim Thomas with the St. Louis Post Dispatch and Jeremy Rutherford of the Athletic, and we were talking about Zach Sanford one game, and with Zach Sanford, we all we all kind of agree there is a constant need with him to give him a kick in the pants every now and then. Yeah. He is not going to, you know, have that motivation and that high level of play all the time. He just does not have the motor. He's a big guy, but he's not physical. Uh, he's not, you know, a guy that's going to, you know, get you ugly goals, you know, in front of the net. That's just not his style. But yet he's physically set up to be like that, and he leaves you wanting, at, you know, all the time. It's just. You know, with, with players like that, yeah, he might go to Seattle. He might be a perennial 20, 25 goal scorer for Seattle and may work out great for him. But for some reason, you know, here in St. Louis, he just goes into this malaise, you know, and, and it keeps it just he's he's just he's very maddening to watch as a fan. Mm-hmm. And I just wonder with, you know, with Costin coming over, which we'll talk about that here in a little bit. And, you know, maybe some other movements that are coming if maybe it's just time to say, you know what? You know, Zach Sanford's going to eternally have potential, but he may never realize it. Let's cut bait. Oh, yeah. um, so, so the Blues are playing better, but there's a couple players that I'm a little worried about for various reasons. So, first things first, let's bring up Jaden Schwartz again because my opinion's shifting on him a little bit, just, you know, in just from recent weeks. Um, Jaden Schwartz, of course, is an unstric- unrestricted free agent. He makes, you know, 5.35 million this year. Um, it's kind of it's kind of hard to say what he's going to get this free agency because of COVID and you know the cap staying where it is. Um, 
I've heard some things that maybe he's going to test free agency. That's I don't like playing the sources game because I mean, you know, any any idiot on the internet can say that they have sources and you know and maybe they occasionally get it right and then they'll brag about how they were right. Uh, I don't play that game. Um, I legit, I legitimately don't have any like deep sources within the blues. I'm just a mm-hmm. fan like you guys, but I have heard some things about Schwartz and that he might want to test the waters. Um, did you guys see the play last night when Schwartz had the puck right in front of Bennington and he was trying to do some dirty dangles and almost ended up allowing a goal. Yeah. Um, that and the fact that the guy just cannot score a goal to save his life. I mean, I, I'll go to I'll go to you on this, Mason. I mean, what NHL team is going to look at Jaden Schwartz's play this year and just be ready to throw a bunch of money at him? You know, <laughs> Buffalo. <laughs> Well, oh yeah, true, true. They need a Taylor Hall replacement. Oh no! Oh god, that, that is so I true. To. I'm sorry, I had to. <laughs> Buffalo, oh, no. where dreams go to die. Yeah, <laughs> Buffalo and Edmonton, both of them. Don't forget I'm Edmonton. Just, I'm just imagining all of those, you know, two on ones with Eichel and Schwartz, and Eichel feeds Schwartz a nice pass, and it ends up like going off the glass behind the goalie. I mean, I'm just imagining that. <laughs> um, no, my God. no. To your to your credit, I think uh, not very many, you know, competent GMs in this league will look at Jane Schwartz and go, "Oh, I'm going to throw him a six by six, You know? Yeah, it, it's just your favorite not, contract. Well, my favorite, oh yes, my favorite contract. Uh, <laughs> still, 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 still not on board, but you know, different tangent. Uh, but it seems like we bring that up every damn episode. We bring up how much I hate that. Thank you, because it's such just, a big part of this team going well, forward. At six by six, mem- thank you for that. Thank it, you. It's a handcuff. <laughs> Trying to get me riled up. Let's it's see, a 50, handcuff. Fifty-two weeks a year, six years. Uh, we're going to be doing a, a lot of talking about this, aren't we? Uh, oh, let's geez. see. So that's going to be, let's see, that's, 52 times six, that's 300 and 312. That's, and a years, th- that's a year's worth of talking about one thing for the next six years. And then times that by six. So 312 times six, you are, about, I would say in a ballpark of about 2000 times than yeah. in the next six years. So brace yourself, Mason. Anyway, um, <laughs> I don't see. <laughs> Anyway, I see, uh, you know, like I, I, I'm still kind of on that train. I would love Schwartz to stick around. I mean, that's too too much leadership has gone out the window. You know, like we mentioned, you know, before that said wonderful extension on Biddington, you said which which player would be more valuable to the team going forward. I'm still saying Schwartz. You know, I'm I'm still definitely on that train. I think that he's he's just such a big presence in the room. You know, he's done so much for this organization already. And I, you know, maybe we should take advantage of the fact that hey, a lot of these GMs probably aren't willing to take a chance on him right now. Maybe it's an intentional thing. You know, you never know. Maybe. So, you know, I think if we bring him back, if we do like a like a four million, five million over a three or four year. I wouldn't mind, you know, even if even if we overpay for him just for a little bit, he's one of those players that I I just I I wouldn't be mad about, you know. Just, same with Ryan O'Reilly's the other one. If we overpay for him, I'm okay with it. If we overpay for Schwartz, I'm okay with it. You know, they're just they're they're two key pieces of this team. Well, well Jane Schwartz, by the way, I should point out that he will be 29 in mm-hmm. in June. Uh, so this is, he's kind of in a similar situation. I feel that Petro is in, although I think Petro is the much better player, uh, in that this is, this might be one of his last chances to like cash in per se and, you know, get himself a contract. Yeah. I just don't think Wags, he's played well enough to get that deal. And I'm kind of wondering if maybe he's a candidate for a bridge deal. Oh yeah, definitely. 100% a candidate for a bridge deal. And he still has the ability to go out there and prove himself. The one thing that you have to take into account is that he is a streaky goal scorer and yes. streaky, streaky goal scorers do still get good contracts and teams that are right on the cusp of being a great team will look at that and go, okay, we've got enough greatness around us that we can uh, afford to have a guy come in and be a streaky goaltender. Cause I mean, look what he did in the playoffs last uh, in 2019 In 2019, everybody was lamenting. They're like, God, we got to get rid of Schwartz. We have, he is just so snake bit. He hasn't scored a goal in forever. I may have been hmm. one of them. Let's see. It's 2021. He's been snake bitten and hasn't scored a lot of goals. I can see the shame on your face, Tom, when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> but but he, in, tw- in 2019, what did he do? 
In 2019, <laughs> what did he do? He absolutely dominated the Jets in the first round series. So he has the ability to, to turn it on. He has the ability to go on runs. And a, a team that's right there on the cusp may be sitting there thinking, okay, we may over we may overpay for him as well and bring him in because when playoff time comes around, he's a hard worker. He goes mm-hmm. to the dirty areas of the ice. He's not going to back down. He's going to hustle the entire game, whether he's scoring yeah. goals or not. That's it's he's a glue guy, and some teams yeah. are going to overpay for a glue guy, and the Blues should be one of them. You saw what Alex Steen did for this team, and I for the longest time yeah. I was not an Alex Steen proponent. I thought he was a guy that was breaking up the team. I thought he was a guy that drove coaches out. But after kind of diving back into it and looking into it, he he was the perfect guy for this team, and Jaden Schwartz is just the next Alex mm-hmm. Steen on this team. So once again, you may have to overpay for him, but I think that it's a good overpay and I see the blues doing it. You you talk about three or 4 million over the next couple of years. He's making 5.3 this year. Yeah. I don't sit there and see him taking that big of a pay cut. I think if anything, he may be looking for a pay raise. The blues may have to go up to five, five and Mm -hmm. and go from there. So it's a little bit of a pay raise and you may be overpaying for a third line, a third line guy, but at that point, I think I'm okay with it with Jaden Schwartz. Right. Well, with the, with Alex Steen, I didn't mind that contract either. You know, it was it sure it was After approaching while, six million. I yeah. wasn't. I was like, he's he was one of those players. I was like, I like to like I like why, jokingly whined about it. You know, just yeah. like oh, we're paying six million for this. But I think every single Blues fan knows how key of a role he played for the team. Not only was he a mentor in the locker room, he he did everything that was asked of him. You know, Mm -hmm. he could be slotted damn near anywhere in the lineup, first off. Second off, like I said, mentor for all the young players. You know, Robert Thomas is straight up said he wouldn't be where he is in his career without Alexander Steen and his guidance. And not only that, but the team around him, whoever he plays with, gives it 120%. Whoever you put on his line, because they're there, you know, they want to impress Alex Steen. I think Jaden Schwartz could give off that same vibe. Yeah, and and I think this year has shown how valuable Alex Steen was to the St. Louis Blues because I believe that the Blues have missed his leadership in the locker room. And Steen was a guy that, you know, and I, and I heard the same things about Steen and that you may have chased off coaches or whatever, but at time has shown he's not a vocal guy in, in the locker room. He is, he, and, he, and he's always team first. Like, I remember uh, when the discussion was had with him and Coach Berube about going down to the fourth line with Sunquist and Barbashev, it was a, it, Ruby said it was like a five minute conversation and Steen did not protest one bit. He, he, he was very much whatever it was to help the club. Now, yeah. was he always this way? I don't know, but I mean, I, to me, he just, he, he never came off as a rabble rouser, you know, in the locker room and, and, and the locker room cancer, as they say, I think that was other players, you know, like I, I, I've heard Oshi, you know, was, what wasn't the best guy in the locker room. He tended to sulk a little bit. Um, you know, we all Ryan know Miller Patrick, was the other one and Patrick Bergen was kind of a head case, you know, you know that you know, so, was too. Simonko was too. Exactly, but you know, getting back to getting back to Schwartz. I mean, I, I I showed a graphic on on my personal Twitter account a couple days ago from Jay Fresh. It's his it's his updated analytics card basically, mm-hmm. and it shows that yes, yeah, Schwartz is is having a bad time finishing this year. I mean that that's that's proven to anyone that just watches him play. He's still a play driver. I mean, he still he still can contribute on offense, at least you know as as a playmaker. But the biggest thing that stood out to me was that his in, in terms of analytics, his defense numbers are elite for a forward. Yeah. And you know, we often don't look at the defensive side of things when it comes to forwards because when you think forwards, you think of your typical goal scorers. Um, and and a lot of times, defensive players, um, defensive forwards, they don't get noticed. They don't get noticed because they're doing their jobs. And right. they're doing their jobs very well. Like, you know, we probably, I mean, I mean, Ryan O'Reilly gets credit for doing so many things well, you know, I mean, being a captain, uh, being a playmaker, having a sick backhand, you know, as we saw against uh, Talbot the other night. Um, but he's also an elite defensive forward. And you don't hear his name called much in the defensive zone, except if, except if he makes a big play. But just in general. You, you know, when you're playing defense, you're not supposed to be noticed. You're not supposed to have the spotlight on you. And say what you will about Schwartz's streakiness, which, you know, I'll, I'll have another point on that here in a bit, but he's consistently an engine for this team. And I I just, I don't think he is due for a big raise. I I, I don't think his play merits a big raise. 
I think he's going to get about what he's making now. Mm -hmm. Maybe even maybe maybe even takes a slight pay cut and gets like goes down to five mil, you know, maybe on a one year or two year deal, just on a on a on a short bridge deal. And you know, basically saying, Oh, you know, blues are saying, Oh, you didn't prove it this year. Well, we'll give you another chance because you're Jaden Schwartz and you've given us a lot of good years. Yeah. We'll give you another chance to prove it and then make your money, you know, next year. That's I think the blues would would be amenable to that. But you know, Schwartz. He, I, I keep every time we bring up Jaden Schwartz, I'm often reminded of Jeff Courtnall. Jeff Courtnall was a very similar player in that he was insanely streaky. I mean, he was a guy that would score goals, kind of like a Mike Hoffman, where he would score goals in bunches and then he would disappear you know, for a couple of weeks, but he was always a moxie guy. He was always a, you know, kind of a rabble rouser. You know, he wouldn't drop the gloves, but he was just kind of a pest out there. Um, and I kept thinking like, you know, I was very sad when he retired because of concussion issues. Um, and I'm, and, and, and I think about that and I think of, man, it would really suck if Schwartz was gone because, you know, of, of, of the things that he does like a Jeff mm -hmm. Cortnall did for the blues. So um, it, it, it's, 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 it's a tough situation for both. I mean, for both the blues and, and Schwartz, because yeah, Schwartz hasn't played the best this year, but I, I guess like the old song goes, you don't know what you got till it's gone. Mm -hmm. And, and may, I don't know if the blues are going to have the um, guts to actually see, test that theory out. But then again, it's all up to Schwartz as well. I mean, he's got a want to resign here in St. Louis as well. And who knows what he's thinking, who really knows what he's thinking. So we'll, We'll see how that plays out. Of course, we talked a little bit about Zach Sanford. No one likes him anymore. I think it's pretty safe to say that we'd love to see him elsewhere, you know, next you know, uh, next year. So I'm not going to waste any more breath on him. Tarasenko. Uh, you know, Tarasenko, we've uh, we've talked a little bit about him and, uh, you know, how he's been kind of up and down since he's come back. Well, now he's hurt. And have you guys heard anything about his injury or how long he's going to be out? It's 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 it, I'm I, it, day to day. I, I hope it is. And I hope this isn't another thing. Well, that, that's straight from Berube's mouth. He yeah. Said, you know, lower body day to day, nothing bigger than that. Yeah. So it sounds like he picked up a knock and hopefully he comes back healthy, but he hasn't, you know, even when he's, he's been healthy, he hasn't been the spark that, that, that the blues needed. And maybe now that we're heading towards the playoffs, you know, maybe, you know, we were kind of talking last week about if we were, we exposed him to Seattle, maybe it would light a fire under him. Um, do you feel maybe that he has something to prove before the playoffs? I don't think he has anything to prove before the playoffs. I think he has, if anything, he has to prove that he's healthy. 100%. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing. And now I still keep going back time and time and time again. And this is something that has been up the blues issue with Tarasenko for five, six, seven years. And every time on Twitter, whenever whenever he scores a goal on the power play and he's in front of the net, it's like, oh, hey, guess what? You put a guy in a position like that and a quick shot and he scores a goal, that's freaking surprising. Yeah. They don't utilize him in the way that I think he should be utilized. He's got the TJ Oshie type of build. He's a guy that needs to be in the middle of the ice where he can use that quick release. That, that's not, He's not a Ovechkin guy. He's not a one-time slap shot from the corner kind of guy. He needs to be in the middle of the, of the ice in front of the net, quick release. I still go back to the, the playoff series against Colorado or, or against Chicago where they're like, they, they broke down that, it's, that the puck is on a stick for like 0.04 tenths of a second. And then it goes in the net. Like you have a guy with that quick of a release, put him in a spot where he doesn't have to have a whole lot of room to maneuver because it feels like when he has time, he over he overthinks. He does. Yes. You need to yeah. get him in a spot where it's just boom, 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 instantaneous. Puck stick goal. Puck stick goal. Puck Ovechkin. stick goal. Ovechkin. Well, but, but see, even Ovechkin still has that time because that pass, that pass is still having to come across ice. He's winding up and he's ready for the shot. Tarasenko doesn't need to wind up. It needs to be, hey, the puck's down low. All of a sudden it's boom, 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 go. Boom, 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 go. Boom, 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 go. That's what Tarasenko needs. When he has that time to think, he overthinks it. And I'm yep. the same way. I am terrible when I have space in hockey. I suck. But yeah. you give me that, you put me in front of the net and just react to a puck, it's going in the net. And that's how Tarasenko is. He's not that kind of goal scorer where he needs all that time to think. He just needs to fire the puck at the net. And if you continue to put him in spots where he's able to do that, like on the power play in front of the net, then he's going to be successful and you're going to see a whole new a whole new player. I get the point of not trying to expose him to too much physicality, but you got to get past that. If, you, if you're going to yeah. put him in a, a place to succeed, 
You need to get past it. Think he's healthy. Put him there and go. And and I don't think the Blues are going to do that, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I I never played hockey growing up, but I did play a little basketball. And I had an issue where uh, sometimes if I had a lot of space and I was right by the basket, I would just clank it or, you know, not, you know, just just completely miss it. And, you know, the coach, you know, took me aside after one game because I was their starting power forward. And uh, he was like, hey, you just just you're you're overthinking it out there. If you're if you're thinking you're stinking. Basically, just do it. Just put it up. You, you know how to score. You've done it in practice. Just freaking do it. And I improved because when, once I once I got the ball in my hands, I wasn't thinking like, OK, should I lay it up and go to the right side or left side? I just let my instinct do it. And Vladimir Tarasenko is, is such an instinctual player that he needs to stop overthinking. He just see and he just needs to, as, as the Nike slogan goes, just do it. Just do it. Um, by the way, uh, Mason, I want to I want to pitch this one to you here. You You tweeted last night. Jake Wallman is elite. So do we do we like Jake Wallman now? I like Jake Wallman now. Oh, okay. he's, he last game he looked good, and the game before he looked good. Yeah, now, there's I, a reason I didn't put an exclamation point. I put a question mark. <laughs> question all right, mark. Let's, just, let's just put let's just get that straight. Yeah, all right, I put a que- I specifically put a question like, is he maybe okay? I mean, he's been <laughs> a hell of a lot better than Vince Dunn, I think. Uh, that's true. That's true. I, I I will say this. I was hard on Wallman at the start of the season. I thought I was he looked he looked lost on defense, and he I, I kept suggesting maybe he should be a forward. You know, because he's he's got good speed and he's got a heavy shot. Put him at, put him left wing. Um, but no, he he looks a lot more comfortable. You know, in oh, yeah. in, in 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 you know playing NHL minutes, which I which I think that was part of the issue with you know. I mean, yeah, we, I, we, we, I, we, yeah. We forget that, you know, even though he's had so many years in the minors, I mean, the NHL and AHL are two different speeds, two different sets of skill levels. And sometimes there can be a bit of a hurdle to jump, you know, and I think and I think Wallman just need a little bit of time to, you know, jump the proverbial hurdle. I would be interested in seeing him back next year. I think he's uh, I think he's an RFA. Yeah, uh, I, think he's uh, yeah I think he's earned another shot. Um, I don't know where he fits in because I'm well, because well, Gunner's probably gone. Um I think he might even retire because I mean he's he's 35 and he's uh he's it's a neck injury with him, right? Yeah. Oh no, no, yeah. Uh, knee. Knee. Oh, it's a knee with him. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking of someone else. But yeah, a knee a major knee injury when you're at the end, you know, 34 going on 35 and you're already like a third pairing guy. I mean, mm-hmm. it might be it might just be time. Yeah. Um you're gonna but you're gonna have Scott Prunovich coming back. You have Vince Dunn might be gone. That'll be oh. Yeah, I'm waiting for Prunovich. Uh, we as even before you joined the show, Mason Wags and I were huge Scott Prunovich fans. Oh, and boy, I've been a huge Scott Prunovich fan for God the two years he's been at the organization now. Oh, yeah, man. so good. That's he exciting is, stuff. It is, and 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 the thing I like about Prunovich is the fact that you know even though he's left-handed shot, he played on the right side in college and he still earned a Hobie Baker playing on his offhand. So he's going to have that versatility and we're not going to have to play the, Oh, can he play on his right side? Or like, he can play wherever he can play anywhere, which is so valuable. It's so valuable because then we can like overstock. If there's like a left-handed or right-handed defenseman that we already have a surplus of, but like this guy's good. Yeah. He can transition like that. That's what's so nice about it. And that's a skill that, you know, it used to be pretty prevalent, you know, in 80s, 90s hockey where players could switch handedness. It's not really a thing anymore. You know, players like that are so hard to find. And having Scott Peronovich do that and maybe for the playoffs, you know, switch to the hand he's more comfortable yeah. with or do like how many players genuinely can just decide, I'm going to play on the left this time around. Very yeah. few. And then still compete at an NHL level. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, and, you know, it's it's been kind of sad this year just because, you know, I mean, no offense to Steven Santini and, and Mitch Reinke uh, or oh, even Nico, big, or even big or, offense or, to him. He stole my number. He's stealing my number. <laughs> that jerk. That absolute that jerk. jerk. Who, who does he think he is? What do you Terrible. think? He's Blues Fan Reacts. Nobody's Blues Fan Reacts. I'm Blues Fan Reacts. That's right. That is right. That is very clear. And, and of course, no offense to Nico Mikula, who I still am very high on. Oh, even I'm, though. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, I would. I often wonder where the Blues would be this year, or how Prunovich would have looked this year. You know, with with everything that was going on, because I think he definitely would have had his chances. He definitely would have had his chances, but it's kind of and, and of course another, another another guy we can't complain about is Vince Dunn because he's not playing. 
So we can't complain about him this time. So we can we can skip no that. scapegoat. Yeah, uh, we can, Zach Sanford's a scapegoat this episode. Yeah, Zach Sanford's a scapegoat. Keep up. It, it's Sanford. It's not done. Dunn will come sorry. back. I'm sure. I'm sure he'll be back. But yeah, we we, we can take a break. You know, all, all you done haters. Sorry, we can't we can't get that in. So, <laughs> um, by the way, uh, Derek points out that our drought started when Schwartz was injured. Coincidence? Eh, it's possible. I think it's possible. I mean, again, forwards contribute more than just goals. You know, and 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 Schwartz is a, definitely a, a guy that contributes in, in in so a lot of areas. And no, Zach Sanford is not a defensive forward, Derek. So. You know, I'd also but, point but, out that uh, with Thomas being out too, that's another another swoon that we saw. I mean, yeah. the team played well when he was in, and he went out with a with a quote unquote upper body injury, and then that's when they started on their losing streak. He and comes they, back and they start and playing well. Now he's back, and the Blues have won four of five, and they've yeah. got points in their last five. I mean, he's 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 a spark when he's when he's healthy, when he's confident. He is an absolute spark, and I'm 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 looking forward to seeing a healthy Robert Thomas. And what he does in the playoffs, because we saw him in the 2019 playoffs. He he was a contributor. Uh, you know, he was he was a very good contributor uh, in those playoffs. And I think um, teams should be really scared of that Thomas Kyrie Hoffman line because it's got speed, skill, and goal scoring ability. Uh, mm-hmm. That could be that could be the Blues' secret weapon when it comes to the playoffs this year. That could be. That could be. <laughs> that 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 is a that is a scary line on on paper. Absolutely. Uh, finally, Tory Krug. Um, I feel, you know, we're almost at the end of his first full year with the Blues. He contributes uh, assists. Um, he's not a total sieve on his end. I mean, that he, he, I feel he's basically come as advertised, but a lot of fans are kind of getting onto him a little bit because he hasn't mm-hmm. scored any goals. Are, are, are you guys worried about that? I'm, I'm not saying. Sh- uh, go for it, Wade. I, I was just, I'm pretty sure we, we, this is a conversation we were having last year, too, was it not? About another I, defenseman uh, that was like on the Blues, Justin. Yeah. Uh, he's not Justin Falk. He's, he's, he's not Justin Falk. Okay, no, he's not, he's not going to have the no, same kind of no, rebound no. that Falk had this year. But I, I was telling my dad last night, I'm like, I, I'm not going to sit here and say he's going to be here for his entire contract and he's going to be a, an elite defender. And the Blues fans are going to be like, oh, I'm so glad we got Troy Krug. He does but have a no trade clause. He does, but he doesn't yeah. have a no movement clause. Two different things. Uh, it, it, they're different. They're different. But I know that, I'm just but saying, I, I'm willing to give him next year to see what he does because you got to remember, it's not that he's just changing changing teams. Same thing with Justin Falk. He's changing conferences. Okay, mm-hmm. the Western Conference is wildly different than the East. The East is a little bit more wide open, a little bit more defensive, offensive friendly. The West is so heavy, so compact, and it's going to take a little while to get used to that. So I am of the mindset that I'm giving him next year. <clears throat> if he comes out next year and has the same type of season, I'd say the blues shop him. But if he comes back, comes out next year and you know, he gives us the 12 to 15 goals, he continues to give solid defense and he does quarterback the power play, which is why they brought him in. I'm okay with the next couple of years. Now get into year four, maybe you look at trading him, but I'm willing to give him that year because of what we saw with Justin Falk this the last two years. And he hasn't been the guy that we are trying to run out of town like we were Falk last year. So mm-hmm. I think he's got a little bit more to give, and I'm willing to give him next year to see if that's possible. 